Hi, everybody. It's Big Cheds. I'm coming to you on a Monday, June 21st, 2021. I hope you are all doing well. This is episode three in a 50-part video series on my best-selling book, Trading Wisdom, 50 Lessons Every Trader Should Know. When the book came out, there was just a ton of demand for an audible version. And I don't have that audible version yet. Uh, so in the meantime, I decided to release uh, one chapter at a time, uh, you know, a video version of each, each chapter. It allows me to go through and expand my thoughts, kind of hear in my own words what I mean and what I'm trying to emphasize. And that way it gives people the opportunity to get the book who want to listen to it, um, you know, before, before the Audible version comes out. They can listen one chapter at a time. Um, there are also a lot of people or some people who are unable to get the book in their country for whatever reason, you know, Amazon doesn't ship it uh, or whatever, or they can't afford it. So I, I'm enjoying doing this free version uh, and doing these videos. So this is episode three. Of course, I'm Ched's Trading on YouTube. I do have the playlist for the book, Trading Wisdom, 50 Lessons Every Trader Should Know. You can find me on Twitter at Big Ched's. It's probably where I'm uh, most well known. I do a lot of chart analysis, trading psychology, Japanese candlesticks, classical charting, that type of thing. Uh, I am a founding analyst at Bitcoin Live, the best in class educational platform for crypto. If you're interested, really serious, serious about learning, definitely recommend you check that out. You can find my book. It's available on Amazon, Kindle and paperback format. Uh, the response has been amazing. The response has been awesome. So thank you for that. I love the feedback. People are saying, um, you know, just how, how easy it is to read the book, how they can, they can relate uh, to all the mistakes. So I'm just really loving the feedback. Thank you. Uh, I am also, uh, prior to this, I did publish my memoir. I am a cancer survivor. I had lymphoma and I published a memoir about my experience as a patient and a caregiver. That book is also uh, available on Amazon. So to get started, um, Every video, I'm going to read in, um, the introduction and the about section, just because I don't know how many videos people are watching. And over time, these things will pop up in video suggestions. And I want people to understand what they're looking at each time. Uh, so I will read the intro and, and uh, about the author section. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is lesson three, staying calm under pressure. Next week, we'll do, you know, wait for opportunity. And last week, or last, last time, rather, was the uh, what's, lesson two, what's the rush? So, about the author. I love trading and have been doing it for many years. My formal training is with Japanese candlesticks and classical charting. And I am certified as a CMT, Chartered Market Technician, Level 1. My educational background in psychology and brief career as an amateur poker player also guide my approach, paying proper respect to risk management and the study of one's opponent. On Twitter is where I am most well-known and can be found at Big Cheds. I am also a proud founding analyst at Bitcoin Live, the best-in-class educational platform for crypto. This is my second book, my first published work was a memoir titled My Battles with Cancer, a candid patient and caregiver's memoir. Introduction. My early days of trading were filled with frustration, confusion, and constant losses. After making some of the same mistakes over and over again, I began to adapt and learned a few tricks to minimize my losses. As I began passing these tricks on to my fellow traders, uh, through my Twitter account and blog, chedstrading.blogspot.com, it launched me on a path of learning and teaching. With enough time, that path led to a dedicated studies of Japanese candlesticks and classical charting, and ultimately CMT certification. My career and brand have been built on helping new traders avoid my old mistakes. And this book is a natural extension of those efforts. This book is also a natural extension of my complete beginner's guide to trading that I wrote back in 2017 when I was undergoing chemotherapy for lymphoma. I subsequently beat my cancer and wrote a book about that experience. 
and have since continued to grow in my journey as a trader and teacher. Building on my years of work with my Twitter account, learning blog, and various other writings on trading subjects, I am happy to now bring together in one place all those bits and pieces that have helped to make me a successful trader. I have personally made every single mistake mentioned in this book multiple times and therefore can speak from the heart, which I hope helps make each lesson a little bit easier to learn. Thank you for reading and best of luck in your journey. So we have lesson three, stay calm under pressure. Uh, next time will be fun too. Lesson four, wait for opportunity. Let's jump right into that. My friends, we'll start with lesson three. Uh, and we begin with a quote as usual. Quote, in many ways, the difference between success and failure comes down to staying calm under pressure. Do not panic. End quote. To be a profitable trader, you must stay cool under pressure so that you can take advantage of bargain basement prices when they come around. When everyone else is panicking, you are scaling into your position because your low ball bid filled. With the comfort of this excellent entry, you are now watching the order flow to decide if you want to wait a bit, add more, or wait for a bit and see how it plays out. It is nice to have options. When panic hits the market, it is time for you to go to work because other people are making bad decisions, allowing you the opportunity to capitalize. So I'll show you what I mean on the chart a little bit, but the gist of it, it's really true. You know, whatever markets you trade, crypto, legacy markets, uh, most of the, you know, they can be really volatile and the price can move really quickly. It can catch you off guard. And if you study sentiment, if you, if you, if you observe sentiment, you can see that people will panic, panic can grow, panic can spread. You know, we're social animals. We feed off one another. And when people are panicking, they're making bad decisions. They're selling into weakness, right? Rather than selling into strength. We've talked about that. You know, they're selling at support, uh, you know, and they're buying, you know, they're buying at resistance, selling into support. They're panicking. And, you know, I, as I said, to be a profitable trader, you must stay cool under pressure so you can take advantage of bargain basement prices. So if you're smart and you're, and you're patient and you can avoid that panic and you, and you can reject the panic, you refuse to let it, you know, uh, to you refuse to let it wash over you, you can take advantage of really, uh, low prices in relation to a moving average in relation to, you know, you're, you can buy a dip in an uptrend. You can buy weakness in an established uptrend, which is kind of the central, uh, central part of any, I believe, any trading strategy. Uh, let's go to the chart, though. I want to show you what I mean. So, for example, here on DOT, D-O-T, and DOT has broken down since then, but in you know, in its uptrend, while it was uptrending, we had the price uh, back in December 2020 climbing up $8, $10, $15, consolidated for a while here, here in January. Uh, it broke out and then, it, you know, it paused a little bit here in February around 27 and then it broke out. So I talk about in the book about um, your low ball bid. Like what's a low ball bid? A low ball bid is a bid that's so low, you don't think it's going to fill. And oftentimes it will, especially in these volatile markets. But you can see how the price had paused and consolidated here, 27, 28. And then when the, when it shot up to 40, $42, you know, this is an uptrend and you want to, you want to buy the dip in the uptrend. So what I recommend people do is identify levels. If something's really hot, right? I have a whole chapter later about fighting the FOMO and don't FOMO set a really low level, a low ball level. So for here, you can see how the price consolidated at 28. And when the price is up at 40, 41, and then it's fall, falling back, you can see twice here in the, on the 20, 23rd and the 25th of February, it kind of dipped right back to that level. So that's called a throwback, a bullish retest. And if you're 
panicking, you're probably selling. You're probably selling here rather than buying. But you, ahead of time, you're smart, you're patient, you're thoughtful. You set your low ball bid. You had an order to buy at like $27, $28, even when the price was at 40 even when the price is at 39 40 because you want to buy a dip in an uptrend. You want to take advantage of those bargain basement prices. You want to buy dips in established uptrends at support. And we can see that worked here on DOT, right? It worked again, 27. It bounced back up to 40. But, you know, why not set a low ball bid at 27? And it happened again. So it went 40 down to 27. And you can either panic here or you can say, hey, because we had a little bit of a like a triangle break. You could see those rising lows and, and the falling highs. We had the triangle break right back into horizontal, key horizontal support. So when your friends are panicking and they're selling, you were looking to buy there because the price revisited that level. Now, of course, you obviously want to have a stop loss. You don't want to just buy there and hold. You want to buy there and say, well, I'll, you know, my stop loss will be, you know, here, 26 or 25. You know, you want to define your risk. Uh, but that worked really well in that established uptrend. And it did it again. That's your low ball bid. Bounced up to 45, consolidated back up to 50, and then boom, down to 29 again. And then it bounced again. So that's just, this This is a low ball bid. You are prepared and you're calm and you are not shaken out um, because you understand that you want to buy dips in established trends. Let's go back to the book. go back to the book and quote, the next time Bitcoin drops $10,000 in a day, and it will try to remember that this is a buying opportunity, not a panicking opportunity, right? So Bitcoin's a very volatile asset and you want to think about price movements. And if there's a slow bleed, you know, a slow bleed is different than a fast, a fast drop. And in something like Bitcoin, which is you almost always uptrending it has the primary uptrend that type of a move that quickly often leads to a really nice short-term trade opportunity um you know people are, are going to panic it's it's a buying opportunity not a panicking opportunity it's just, it's amazing look what happens when there's a quick massive market drawdown and there's panic everywhere you see some of the best traders starting to scale into their positions Right? What does that mean to scale in? If they want to put in uh, you know, $3,000, they're not doing it all at once. They're putting in 1000 Now they're going to buy a little thousand later. They're scaling in, they're, you know, buying in a little bit, little bit at a time. So when the price drops, and it could not have to be Bitcoin. It could be anything else. When something else drops, you know, $10,000, 20, 20% uh, you know, or whatever, whatever it is, a large amount like that, it's usually a buying opportunity, not a panicking opportunity, Right. You just just avoid the panic. Be thoughtful. Have a plan. You're going to do much better in the long run. Back to the book. Executing this strategy correctly will take a lot of practice, but the payoff is worth it. The ability to stay calm when the market is blood red will help you spot favorable risk reward setups in an otherwise hectic environment. When the price pulls back so far that it is dipping below the lower bands, lower Bollinger Bands, I have a lesson on that later, or perhaps revisiting that prior breakout level you strike. These, these favorable scenarios give us confidence when others are paralyzed by fear and unable to pull the trigger. Just what I talked about with DOT, right? Uh, pulls back to, when, it pulls, when the price pulls back so far that it's dipping below the lower bands or perhaps revisiting that prior breakout level. I talked about that, I showed you that. When the price rises, it pauses, establishes resistance, and then breaks through, it's called a throwback or a bullish retest when it comes back and retests that level. Those are, those are wonderful entries. They're, they're very high probability longs. Of course, you manage your risk with a stop loss. We talked about that. So when other people are panicking, you're not because you understand that price, the price will do that. It will revisit a prior breakout level and then most likely bounce from there. And that's where you want to target your entries, right? You want to be buying the weakness and selling the strength, right? Rather than doing the opposite. And too many times new traders get caught up in that. All right. Back to the book. Quote, if you are a bull, then pullbacks are your best friend. The more we digest, the higher we go. And that's so true because you have long-term holders and you have short-term speculators and you have people who play a channel. They play 
they could play a consolidation channel and they'll buy that dip and then they'll sell as it approaches resistance. And there's that natural cycle where uh, if you think about like a stair step, the price will go up, consolidate, consolidate, go up, consolidate, consolidate, go up. It's stair steps. And sometimes we'll come back and revisit a level. But you need to digest. You need to consolidate. And when an uptrend consolidates, it allows your other, your indicators to reset. It allows your oversold, overbought RSI to cool off. And then you get that hidden divergence, the lower low on the RSI. Um, it allows, you know, allows your indicators, allows the chart to reset and, allow, and, and uh, for you to move, to continue on to a higher level, right? Because trends from classical charting, trends tend to continue and trends need to consolidate. And the more you digest, the, the higher it can go because everything has kind of reset itself. So you want to learn not to freak out. Like you think about like a bull flag, you know, where the price goes up and then it kind of just turns sideways slowly down. You see it all the time. People are freaking out, but that's a continuation pattern. It's a, it's a bullish consolidation or bullish continuation pattern. The price needs to consolidate. Um, people panic. Like it goes up, price goes up so much and then it pulls back just a little bit and it kind of just churns near the top, you know, near the top of that move. That's just, that's just consolidation. You need to consolidate. So you need to understand that, that, that an uptrend will need to consolidate and that you want these things to consolidate. It, you know, if something just keeps going up without any consolidation, it's going to come back down really quickly and you don't want that. And when it does that, it goes up really quickly. There's no support. There's no support on the way back down. You, there's no throwback. There's no level for you to kind of form a throwback or a bullish retest. Back to the book. How many times have you studied a chart and come up with a great plan for entering on a retracement? But as soon as it happens, you get nervous and change your mind. I've been there myself in the past, but now I stick with my plan. Trust myself and see the idea all the way through. These larger market drawdowns offer us the opportunity to buy dips in established trends, established uptrends, which is a great way to build up your portfolio. That's it. Like you, you know, I, I, I often, I, I encourage people to spend time, practice with the chart, you know, whatever you're, whatever you're trading is something you should be studying and watching uh, on your watch list. And you should have levels marked out that you think will uh, identify when the trend is changing, when the trend is strengthening, when the trend is weakening. And as a chart technician, as a student of classical charting, you want to buy dips and uptrends. And you mark those levels that you say, that would be a nice buy. That would be a good low ball bid. And it's hard not to panic when the price just flushes and gets there, but you need to stick with your plan. You need to understand that you might feel a little panic, but that's just human nature. Be analytical. Look at the chart. Identify support. Look at that, that, that supply and demand. Look where bulls are defending the price time and time again. Look where it bounces, consolidates, come back to that level with a good time interval in between, with a good amount of time in between. And, and pay attention to the price. To pay attention to the price. When the price is telling you that this is a level it, it likes to bounce off of, have confidence buying there while still applying your risk mitigation strategies, you know, your stop loss, right? Identify a level you'd want to buy based on the chart. And when it flushes, when it panics, stick with your plan. Stick with your plan. See it all the way through. It takes experience, takes practice. Doesn't happen overnight, but you can get there. Back to the book. We finished the, the chapter with a quote. If you loved these alts, those are altcoins, five minutes ago, you should adore them after a 10 to 20% haircut. Stop chasing the green and learn to love the red. It is Valentine's Day after all. So that's a quote from back in Valentine's Day. We were in a very strong uptrend uh, in the crypto market. And people just love to chase green. People love to buy buy the breakouts. They love to, they love to buy when the price is above the upper Bollinger and stuff like that. And you have to understand, like an uptrend needs, as I said earlier, an uptrend has to consolidate. It, it will come back. It will, price will revisit a short-term moving average, an 8 EMA, a 12 EMA, some type of a short-term moving average. It's going to come back. It's going to revisit a prior breakout level. The price needs to digest. The price needs to consolidate. Don't panic. Stay calm under pressure and you're going to be doing, you're going to do just fine. Lesson three in my best-selling book, Trading Wisdom. 
50 Lessons Every Trader Should Know. You can think about this book as uh, you know, one-third trading psychology, one-third risk management, one-third technical analysis. Um, the book has been super popular, very successful, and I'm just, you know, thank you for that. Uh, I'm never, I never expected to, to do this well, to be completely honest. And uh, a lot of people have asked me for, as I said earlier, an audible version. I don't have that audible version yet, probably later this year. But in the meantime, I'm releasing one video at a time on my YouTube channel, Sheds Trading. This is episode three. There's the playlist, 50 Lessons Every Trader Should Know. Definitely check all the videos out. Uh, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, share it with your friends. You can find the book on Amazon, uh, both in the Kindle and paperback format. Uh, if you are interested, my first book, My Cancer Memoir, is also available on Amazon, My Battles with Cancer. If you, are, if you want to take trading seriously and you want to learn, I definitely uh, recommend you check out Bitcoin Live, the best-in-class educational platform for crypto, where I am a founding analyst. You know, but other than that, I want to say thank you. I really appreciate you uh, watching this video. I, I encourage your, your, uh, your feedback. I enjoy your feedback. I read all the comments, and I enjoy doing these videos. So I hope they're helping. I hope you are enjoying them. And uh, until next time, we'll talk again soon. All right? Big Cheds out.